Okay. So, I guess uh, I'll start reading and then we'll go around. Um, Parashas um, Vayetze. Okay. So, so it, just to be clear again, who's talking? Okay. The Sefer Alekutim is from the Arizal. Yeah, that's from the Arizal. It's, it's from the Kisve Ari. Uh, it's, the, it's the Rabbi Chaim Bita who writes it. In his name. In his name. Um, okay, so in the Midrash, on this parsha, uh, the Bereshit Rava, it is written that Rabbi Yehuda Bar Shimon opened his discourse by explaining the following verse. God makes individuals dwell in a house. He brings out the captives in proper ways, which is from Tehillim. Um, I, which we have to try to find, me to, we have to find out what that means. He continued, a certain non-Jewish matron once asked Rabbi Yossi Bar Chalafta in how many days did the Holy One Blessed Be He create His world? Okay, it's hard to understand how all well, that is connected, but obviously we can imagine that the, ho the house is connected to His world, and I don't know why it doesn't bring the rest of like Gemara. Yeah. The Midrash. It continues actually. No, 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 yeah. No, not. No, no, it skips the end. Basically, he said six days or seven days or whatever, and then she said, "So what's he doing now?" So he said, "He's being Mizavi Zavugid." Yeah, but it right. continues. Yeah. Like he, right. He's going to say yeah, it after. Like starting here, it continues. Uh, it continues. So let, let, yeah, it continues after. Well, in, in, in the commentary, yeah. In the commentary, no, comment, it, it, it doesn't say. Yeah, in the, that's the a current. short form, I guess, in his the way he brings it. But. Okay, so let's see what he quotes the Midrash, which is in six days he answered, he answered, and that he has been, what has, and what has he been doing since then? The one basically he sits and makes matches, he answered, assigning this man's daughter to that man, this man's wife after he dies or divorces her to that man, this man's money to that man as a dowry for when he marries his daughter. If that is difficult, she scoffed, I too can do the same. I have so many men servants and maid servants, in no time I can match them up. Said he to her, if it is easy in your eyes, it is as difficult before the Holy One that he has the dividing of the Red Sea. Right? Which we have to try to understand what's the connection with the Red Sea. Rabbi Yos is as if something was hard for Hashem. Right? What was hard about the Red Sea for Hashem? Rabbi Yossi Bachalafta went. She went and took a thousand men servant and a thousand maid servant and lined up opposite each other. The first speed dating in the wor in world history. <laughs> she then said, "This one will marry that one, and this one will marry that one, and marry them all that night." Next day, those who were thus united came to her. This one's head was injured. That's one's eye was out of its socket. Another one's leg was broken. She asked them, what's the matter? This one said, I do not want this man. While well, this man protested, I do not want this, that woman. Straight away, she summoned Rabbi Yossi Bachalafta and admitted to him, there is no God like your God. It is true. Your Torah is in it beautiful and praiseworthy and you spoke the truth. Said he to her, did I not say to you, if it is easy in your eyes, it is as difficult before the Holy One, blessed be He, as the dividing of the Red Sea. If the Holy One, blessed be He, matches them up against their will and to their detriment. What is the proof? God makes individuals dwell in a house. He brings out the prisoners in proper ways, bakosharot, in, in a kosher way. What does bakosharot mean? Weeping, bechi, and song she wrote, he who desired his companion utter song, and he who does not weeps. Okay. Desires his companion. What does that mean? So no, it's a, no, it's like no, no, no. It's a, he who desires the person. So meaning, in, uh, in his companion. It's fifty-fifty. Well, I don't know if it's fifty-fifty. He's saying that Hashem, God makes individual dwell in a house. Um, the Holy One, he matches them up against their will to their de detriment. So, meaning, I'm, I'm going to be forced to marry someone, basically. Uh, I'm going to fall for, you know, for the look, for the situation, for 
I like that girl, the middles, whatever it is. And then I'm going to be prisoner in this house. Right. And then I have two choice. Or I can weep or I can sing. <laughs> okay. No, right, right. It can't be like, more, more straightforward than that. It seems like it's saying what... Basically, it's similar to the maidservant thing. Right? Like, everyone gets married to someone and some of them are miserable. And some are right, happy. Right, right. That's it, just the way it is. But, but no, but it depends on if he desires that person meaning right. if that That's person becomes someone he actually desires he, he makes that person the object of his desire you mean it, it's in his control he yeah does. that's that that's, 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 that's just saying it's potluck or, or it's just no i just think that's no? no i think that's he that's not, his companion or his so that's in his control because you can have two people right it's 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 meaning he brings out the prisoner in proper ways as if to say oh he's gonna get stuck with that person and or you or you're gonna come out miserable but they'll sit, you don't have done your tikkun because she's gonna be against you or you're gonna come out happy because you have learned to desire her and um and you and and you're gonna say songs <laughs> right so I mean that again. That that's the way I interpret it. That for now, the way I read it. But we'll see. Uh, he's gonna give his own answer. Um, so it is proper to understand the following questions. So it's gonna, I have a few questions. Um, first, what is what in this verse so troubled Rabbi Huda Vashimon that it forced him to interpret it as referring to making matches? Okay. So the the the, the, the pasuk. Like God makes individuals dwell in his house, he brings out a cap the captain in proper ways. What's, how does he see this coming to matches? The simple meaning of the text is that it refers to Egypt. The Israelites came to Egypt, few in numbers, few in numbers, 70 souls, and God made them into the house of Israel. He increased their numbers. As it is written, and the Israelites were fruitful and swarmed. The verse thus means God made out of the few God made out of the few a multitude and a great house. The verse then described what happened afterwards. That he brought them out in proper ways, in a time fit for living, neither in the hot summer nor the cold winter, but in the spring season, Chodesh Aviv, in the month of Nisan. This is the meaning of the word in proper ways. Okay, so that, that's the way where he refers to the Pasuk about how he took care of taking Israel out. Israel is the house. Okay. Secondly, why did the matron, in phrasing her question, say, in how many days with a Lamed, meaning literally, for how many days? Bilashon Shala. Um... Uh, trying to find in the last one. For how many days? Become a Become a Yamim or Become a Yamim Benamed. Become a Yamim Benamed. Okay, so for how many days? Was it rather than with a bait, which would mean in how many days? True, we could say that this is the printing error. For in some of the other sources in which this same story is told, the word is written with a base. Bait, but in, but it is me, it is better to understand it the way it is written, especially since in yet other sources it is written the way it is written here. Okay. That's one no, second question. Third question. Another question. Why did Rabbi Yossi Bachalafta bring proof that God made the world in is six days? In six days, from the verse for in six days God made, which is from Parshat Yitro. In Parshat Bereshis, the entire account of creation is told in detail. This happened on the first day. That happened on the second day, etc. And God finished on the seventh day. It would have been better to bring proof from there. Um, Not sure what he means, Parshas Yisro. 
Oh, okay. Be because of Shabbos. Mm -hmm. Right. This is the mitzvah of Shabbos. If you can see so why do, you, why do you bring, you have to go all the way. We, we, I mean, we could say it's connected to, because it was connected to Egypt, because he mentioned Egypt before. But, okay. Furthermore, the matron really, um, the matron really intended only to ask the second question. From then until now, what has been, has he been doing? The answer to the first question is obvious to everyone that God created the world in six days. So why did she have to preface her real question with the first one? Elsewhere, it is implied that everyone admits that the world was created in six days. So what she really wanted to ask could not have been this question, but only the second question. So again, why did she preface it with the first question? Right? It seems not connected. She asked first, in how many days did God, God create the world? His world. And then... So, and, and that, that, well, that's the first question. The second question is... Um, What's he doing? What is he doing? Right. Yeah. So what is he doing since the creation of the world? So w w why do you have to have this question? Furthermore, what kind of question is the second question she asked? What has God been doing since then? Who doesn't know that God oversees all the details of life and sustain and provides for everything? From the horns of the rain to the egg of the lice. So I mean, Gemara Badazar. That he causes the rain to fall, makes the dew blossom, makes the wind blow, provides for the needs of every living thing and so on ad infinitum so he's constantly busy so to speak uh maintaining the world the rim is a large bison like animal the image is that image is that god provides for all creature from the grace to the least beside which our sages stated in, in reference to the verse mention not the sins of my youth that since God created the world, he has been making and fixing delicacies and the worlds to bestow upon the righteous in the world to come. Um, they offered a parable to illustrate this, of a king who prepared a great feast and invited the, the notable of his capital to it, but they were too few to eat the whole meal. So he invited the middle class of people, but they were still too few. So in the, at the end, he invited the whole city, great and small, so as not to waste the feast he had prepared. Thus King David said, Mention not the sin of my youth and my transgression for the sake of your goodness, O God, so that, that there be enough people to benefit from it. So here is telling you another answer why that, that, that God is busy. Um, and he used this mashal to to explain it. Okay. Do you understand the mashal with King David? Mm -hmm. what, what? How do you understand it? He's saying Hashem is trying to make make a bunch of toys. Um, in other words, he keeps he's like producing stuff right. for everyone to benefit from. So. Yeah, how does he make so work with King David? Some manufacturing stuff, so like basically by the end, there's the surplus of stuff, and he has to invite the whole everyone. You get things, and you get toys, and you get. You know, right, you but know the losers get. Okay, but how does he fit with David Amenas? So David, da, uh, how does Oh, they yeah, mentioned oh, that oh, the sins okay. of my youth. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But that's that, that's how I, I don't understand how it connects to to the mashal like. Mention not the sins of my youth and my transgressions for the sake of your goodness, O oh God, so that there be enough people to benefit from it. So in other words, somehow if Hashem mentions David's sins from his youth and his transgressions, then Hashem won't be able to give good to everyone. Give good to everyone as if to say, um, if I forgive you, so to speak, if I... If I come if you, if you, you have enough good to do to benefit everyone, like like. Otherwise, right. it's gonna. Is that is that what it means? Uh, it seems like it. Could it mean that if you mention the badness, then the. Then they'll be punished. The, the, the lower people. Mm, ah. Mm, ah, because if he is punished for his the thing of his youth, that means other people also are gonna be punished. 
Yeah, he doesn't elaborate on that, does he? Going no, no. Well, yeah, that's a whole uh, we, we might, we might, we might, we might understand later, but uh, it's like uh, mention not the sins of my youth. So don't mention it. And that has to do with David, who is also righteous in the world to come. He be still dedicated to him. Wait, maybe there's a maybe the rest of the pasuk says something. Right, because the light, right, the velikus is for the righteous, right? He made it for the righteous in the world to come. And if there's no righteous in the world to come, then it won't, naturally, it won't then spill to everyone else. Mm -hmm. So there has to be righteous in the world to come that Hashem is going to give over these delicacies. And if there's no righteous, then no one gets anything. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Can I use your big gigantic Tanakh? Oh, yeah, sure. I love this. Yeah, I feel like I'm going back in time. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big group. Oh, me too. Yeah, it's just so if it's like Hashem is throwing a feast for. Let's say Hashem is throwing a feast for you. Right, bye bye. And then and because there's so much and you're like, Oh, let me let me bring Joel and, and, and Nathan over. Because they have so hey, many sinners. good things. But does that mean that my Because the feast is for you technically. So okay. It's supposed to be for the righteous. And then it's like well, if there's so much food that it's like I mean, but if he was you a don't sinner, need, then he would then he, he wouldn't have gotten uh, Yeah, then it's right, then it's started. like then, then why then would Hashem I wouldn't be able to benefit all the ones who didn't get the chance to benefit anything. The right. all the other class, yes. you you wouldn't. No, we, no. we wouldn't. I I, w I would have enough for myself, but I would, it it will be reduced just to me. I wouldn't have extra to share with others. Why? Because oh, wait, because so because, that's a different way, yeah. because the whole concept of the righteous of the tzaddik in 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 Torah in, in Judaism is that he's gonna be able to benefit all those who didn't deserve. Oh wait a minute! Like like Moshe Rabbeinu. Wait, is, is this is this is this referring? To, is this is this really referring to David's sins, or maybe he's taken upon the sins of just like the, what we talk about when when we say we do it. It's not really our sins, but we're saying it's ours, so that Hashem can forgive everyone else. You understand? Yeah. Um. I don't know. <laughs> Because he's saying, don't, don't, don't not mention the sins of my youth. So he's saying that their sins is really my sins. So if you, if you mention my sins, which is really their sins, but I'm, I'm saying that it's really my sins, mm. then... Let's see from This psalm is, has a, is a principle of teshuva. The King David felt the, how bad his sin was, and he... he Started dominating. So, twenty-five, thirteen. His sins, or the his one sin he did. Yeah, yeah. He's he's. Uh, well, sins, plural. Yeah, sins. Right. Yeah, sins of sins, his youth. Sins, sins of well, his youth. Both. How does it write in Peshai? Mm. To. Uh, but the only sin that I'm aware of that David did was the one with the uh, well, the roundabout sin with uh, Bathsheba, whatever. No. He definitely did another famous one with the counting. Well, was that considered? Life. Was that his youth though when he did that? Con con I guess that could yeah. be considered in his youth. What? I mean, it depends change? what you call youth. <laughs> oh, depends. It's, oh. It says you know uh, later that uh, David was old. Zach and Bayam, Bayam. I don't know. Uh, you could consider his his, mm -hmm. his youth. As as the man to Hashem. Um, so I, th I think I, th I think that might be the pshat. That 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 if King David is not forgiven for that those things, then there won't be enough to benefit the, all those who don't deserve. Because the party is really for his sake. So if he doesn't deserve it, then no one. There's no party. 
because there's no yeah with this like there's no queen without the king there's no party without the people so they, it's, it's, it's to like, increase the party it's like there's a birthday party for you like if there's a birthday party for you then we can also partake of the cake right but exactly really, but we're just partaking you need and if there's no birthday party for you then there's no party for us to partake in so to speak Oh, if it's just a small party for me for just one thing I did, or for, you know, I didn't, I was not as popular for because I did some sin, then I have, I have a small cake, and therefore I won't be able to share with more people. Yeah, concept. But of, he's saying he's using himself as a, as a, I don't know, a template for all tzaddikim. I th I think so. Meaning, don't don't. Oh. Don't don't punish any of the sadiqim so that we can have this party. That that so you, that's what I understand, party. right? I, th I think that's. I mean, I don't know if it's trying to teach us the concept of the sadiq here, but I, I think it's. Um, mm. I mean, look, it says it, it says, oh yeah, so don't even lamos, neanchil la sadiqim, la sidlavo. It's connected to the concept of of sadiqim. So yes, it is. And this is related to the, the light and the in the and the, the world to come. The, and, yeah, well in the course of creation, right? That Hashem hid in hid it for the tadik in the world to come. Right. Yes. He just explains that it, he describes that as delicacies. Right. Okay, you want to continue? Even? Sure. So even if we assume that this matron being a non Drew did not know this and Rabbi Yossi did not wish to tell her this as an answer because she might not believe, she might have not believed in the world to come. There are numerous examples of things God is doing in this world, as we have said. This being the case, what was her question? And why did Rabbi Yossi want to answer her thus, but said instead that God is making matches, to which she could reply, I can, I can also do this. But if you would have answered her by saying what we said, that you sustain providing for everyone from the, the horns of the rain, she would have not been able to reply, I can do this, I can also do this. Okay. Furthermore, right. our sages have said that all souls, from the time they are formed of the supernal source, out of the place from, from whence they were hewn, emerge as male and female together. Afterwards, each half goes its own way, the male to one body and the female to another, and they eventually join in this world, and so and so with so and so. We may assume that such a match does not have to be forced against their will. Uh, then commenting, why then does the midrash state that God matches them against their will and 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 to and to their detriment? The question is, do you get actually free choice in choosing the choosing the right mate? <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. Another question. We have never seen anyone get married against his will or to his detriment. And the most joyous occasion in a person's life is the day of his wedding and the day of his heart's joy. At least when people get married, they do so feeling that this is for their good and that they will be happy. Furthermore, if it is indeed true that God makes matches against our will, there should be no reward or punishment for fulfilling or avoiding the commandment to procreate. For if a person is married to his wife, uh, perforce, why should he earn reward by by marrying, and why should he incur punishment for not marrying? He could reply to the heavenly court, "Why why wasn't I forced by heaven to marry, like you force others?" Okay, we must also understand why in the in the in the matron's question. Since then, what has he been doing? Uh, why did she articulate the pronoun he explicitly? Uh, oh. In Hebrew, the subject pronoun can be understood from the verb, um, and there's no necessity to articulate it explicitly. Mm -hmm. okay, and then furthermore, Rabbi Yossi also chose to phrase his answer explicitly, saying, The Holy One, Bessie, uh, be he, sits and makes matches. He could have simply responded, He makes matches. Why did he mention the Holy One, Bessie, be he, explicitly? No, it's, it's, it's a. It's interesting. So someone asked me uh, this week, uh, was it yesterday? That we need to we need Gemara to understand Kabbalah, meaning that the way, see the way it's asking the question like that's it's a Gemara type of oh, that's, that's of, 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 log of logic, and that's what the Gemara prepares you to that type of logic. The way you say he did he need even need to to say he, uh, it's 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 um, yeah. yeah. You really nitpick each word. Yeah. Right. Right. 
The answer to all this is as follows. Rabbi Yehuda Bar Shimon assumed that if the verse God caused individuals to dwell as a house refers to the exodus from Egypt, it should have read, He makes the few into many. Why does it use the idiom individuals and why does it use the idiom as a house to mean into many? Furthermore, the verb he caused to dwell, if it means increasing the Jewish people, does not fit well with the name Elohim used for God in this verse, which indicates strict judgment. Uh, what God did for the Jewish people in taking them out of Egypt was pure mercy, so it would have been more appropriate to use in this verse the name of mercy, saying Havaya causes individuals. Why instead is the name Elohim used? Hmm. It should have been the name uh, Abaya, yeah, right? He therefore says that through understanding the argument between Rabbi Yossi Bar Chalaf, Chalafta and the Matron, uh, we will be able to understand this verse properly, i.e., why the name Elohim is used. And for this reason, he says that it is proper to, to use the name Elohim in reference to making matches, for God forces matches to take place, hmm. as we will explain further on God, please God. Okay. I think now we're going to start really getting into, uh, maybe... I don't know. You want to read the yo? Yeah, sure. I'm just catching up a second. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. well, it's like questions upon questions and then questions and questions. Right, right, we're, right. we're literally just building it up. Right, right. It's building up to... Eventually you know, he's working to get to the... Yeah, because... Make what, sense of it. The Kabbalah is the micro level. Macro is... It's more chat uh, or science. Micro, it's, 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 well, I always used to give the example. Originally, people, they start to look for the big things in the world, the stars, like that. So you sent Hubble and to find out. Mm -hmm. and, and, we, and we thought, you know, maybe we understand the world. Today, we, it's the microscope, mm. right? We, we had first Hubble before the microscope, uh, if, if, if I found the correctly. At least now we go deeper and deeper inside into the molecule, the quarks, to go and realize that everything, you want to understand what's happening all the way there in the planets? It's happening there in the photons, the atoms, in the electrons, right there in, the, in, you, in yourself. So we, the Kabbalah is like, it's really those, that's micro level. Um, it's almost the symbol of the... It's in tomb, that the center, right, the center is, is as holy as the, the outside, <laughs> like we said, anyway, yeah, uh, if you're here, you can find an answer as deep as all the way on the outside, it's, but it's right there, you don't have to go, lech lecha, inside, um, Inner space. Inner space. Remember that movie? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I need to start from the NS for the Matrix again, because the Matrix is broken. Inner space? You mean the book? <laughs> oh, that's it. No, but there was a movie. It was all about, like, something strong. It's miniaturized. And, and then going to the body. To the body and it was like, a good old movie. movie. Yeah. One of the first, like, really science fiction type of movie. Like, so it was cool. very... It was so cool. Yeah, yeah, I remember as a uh, kid. It was so... The new... Uh, blood vessels and... Yeah, and the antibody is attacking. Yeah. It was so yeah. cool. You know, in February is coming out the, the newer uh, addition to the Marvel series, the Ant-Man and the Wasp. Quantum, it's called Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum something. Quantum, okay. Quantum Worlds or something. So they, so they, they, they shrink, in the movie, they're going to shrink down to quantum size, whatever, really tiny, like, the, whatever. and then it, that's a whole other universe. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's yeah, different yeah. characters and stuff like that. And it's cool. They, so have, they had that something similar with Ant-Man. No, this is, this is a follow-up to this. Oh, it's a follow-up. Oh, 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 okay, okay. But quantum, yeah, cool. they, they're going to... The quantum leap they're, they're, they're or something. They're expanding the idea of the quantum, there's universe. All that is, a, the it's, a, world, it's for our mind to understand the... That's wild, though. Yeah, yeah. It really is. Yeah, yeah so... Um, As for the matron? Yeah. I need to start there. As for the matron, even though her main question and intention was about her second question... Since then, what has he been doing? She wisely prefaced this with her first question, in how many days? This is because she saw that she could be answered in the way we have described. Namely, that God oversees all the details of life and nourishes and sins from the horns of her image. She, she therefore prefaced this question with, in how many days did the Holy One blessed be the world? She meant, 
we cannot say that someone who did such a great act in only six days has since then been occupied solely with such minuscule details. For since he is so powerful, this cannot take him so much time, and he must still have so he must still have much time left. Okay. Rabbi Yosef ben Chalapta therefore to answer her that he's busy making matches, meaning that all that besides all that she knew God does every day, he does this too, and it is a difficult task that requires a lot of time. This explanation, of course, with the textual reading in which the matron's question begins with the letter bet, meaning in how many days. In these texts, Rabbi Yossi also answered her beginning with the letter bet, meaning in six days. Okay. Mm-hmm. But according to the textual reading in which he asked for how many days with a lamed, and Rabbi Yossi also responded to her for six days with a lamed, <clears throat> her intention was to ask for how many days was it God's intention that the world last Since she was asking about God, and in his eyes, a thousand years are as a day that passes, and it is known that the world will exist for six thousand years, and one thousand years after it will be desolate, it follows that she really meant to ask for how many millennia will the world endure, for each millennium is like a day in God's eyes. All right. For how many days she meant for how many millennials? So what was up to the lamb in the, in, ha, in how like, many days? Is it for how long? Meaning for how long? For, for how, how many long. days? Uh, it's like in how many days? It's more Just like implying the future, right? For how many? Oh, for for how? Yeah. For, for how long will the world endure? Right. Basically, right. how many days will the, will the world endure? How many millennia will the world endure? Okay, so then what's the follow? Oh, that then is going to continue. Right, yeah, it's continuing. Okay. Continuing with the matron's logic in this ver- of, in this version of the question, <laughs> since he foresees all that will be, and his original intent was that the world exists for a fixed time, he probably endowed each creature when first he created the world with all the power it requires <clears throat> to exist for its duration. If so, what has he been doing since then? We cannot say that he has been overseeing his creatures and that he has and that he has to provide for everything from one to the rain and so forth. For all the energy they require and all their sustenance has already been prepared, ready, and endowed to them from mm. the moment of creation. Just have to get rid of that that type of question. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're saying so that's why he That's why she didn't ask with a bet, she asked with a lamed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because then that would be answered easily. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This idea can better be under- be better understood. By understanding the question raised in the Zohar, regarding the verse quoted here, For in six days God created the heavens and the earth. The verse literally reads, For six days. Why is the word in left out and only implied? The answer given is that God made the world in general, heavens and earth, as six days, i.e. the six extremities, which are the six supernal days. So, yeah, with the, the small... Um, there are, these are the six spirit from Chesed to Yisod. Um, there are six facets human emotion and character. So, therefore, God took six days to express these in creation. Right, so that the, the six, for the, for the six, for those six okay. emotion, for those six extremities. Oh, okay. So, it's not literally big, okay. Right. This is because it is known that the days are not just arbitrary units of time, but are rather bona fide creations of real substance, similar to angels, <coughs> but more sometime, sublime and inclusive. As it is written, days will be formed, and the days and the days of Israel drew near, and the days of David drew near. The six supernal days conduct the affairs of this world, each one on its temporal day of the week. Giving all who ask for their needs whatever they require. For God the Creator already endowed them with all the energy they require, each one for its time when He created them. The six fruit are the channels through which divine beneficence flows into the world. Um, so it's just it's going, it, yeah. just explaining why. So it's saying each day has its own energy that it's going to provide for that day. 
um, I mean, similar with the same concept as before that the word it says. It's just, that's just to explain deeper the idea of that concept that things are sustained by themselves. So that God, God has to create a system in which even the days themselves have in them all the package for that day of what I need. So all the Tuesday of the world. And the, and the day now is referring to, to the ch six chesed right. thing? Yeah. Is, that's the, so Sunday is chesed. Actually, I have a sidor that says, you know, Sunday you, it's, it's chesed. Monday is a sidor. So I read it. But yeah, each day you, you work. There's some actually people who actually work on a midah each day. On Sunday, they were on being chesed. On Monday, it was to be on gvura. Tuesday, wow. uh, you work on being uh, first, and like that. That's why they, they even we choose marriage on certain mm -hmm. days because I think the best time to get married is Tuesday, because the third day until the creation is per revu. There's all. So each day he has brings its own. Like the homework count, like each day has right. its own energy, whatever. Right? So, so he just explained deeper, a little bit deeper, the concept of self-sustaining and why those, the four those six days, for, for each one to have its own energy and to be self-sustaining, so to speak. Each uh, what? Each mida? Each each day, each mida, yeah. Have its own energy to sustain whatever it will. Give, Meaning, whatever will embrace it. Uh, Whoever embraces chesed will have energy from chesed. Yeah, it's, 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 it's right now, it's, it's like the same thing of the concept of, of, of daven, time of daven. What, what does it matter if you daven before this man, after this man? Because that man, when you, you, you daven shachar is, is you connect to a, an energy that is there that can only be catched during that time that you can draw energy from. When you pass that time, you cannot use that energy. So, say so you can till daven till chatzot, it doesn't count as the same level of tefillah because if you had catch that energy, you have sent into the world the energy that that world needed that for that day, and that every day is different has different energy. So that's why we keep davening every day, every day because every day has its own shacharit with its own and unique strength. You have the day. So you see how each day it has uh, so it's, it's all so there, awesome. right? So, so, so that's the importance of davening with in, with the zman, that which it's it's always a struggle, especially, especially for men. That's why we we're time bounded. The woman is not time bounded, but we are time bound. This is the tikkun of men to deal with his emotions, right? The six emotions to be emotional and to be connected to time. It's all tikkun of the male energy. I'm, I'm going to sidetrack it, but that's the the concept there of if you davening on time, you this is the Ram Chazes in Der Hashem that you every day has its own unique set of strength and power and you so and by davening you're able to connect to those strength for and give you everything you need for that day but it's saying all that energy all that strength was already put into stored, create, was already put into in the supernal days when it was right, created exactly. initially right hmm. so that's why you, yeah. okay now the name of the angel Metatron, who is called the minister of the world, Metatron, yeah, it's composed of six letters. Um, okay, these are the six. Uh, these are the six extremities as they are projected within him, which are the six powers manifest as the six supernal days we have mentioned. The affairs of the world overall are conducted by him. For he is the minister of the world, even though the aforementioned supernal days are superior to him. So he, he, yeah. So he is also part of the system where he gives to, he orders things to go in a certain way. So like, oh, Rabbi Gamacher is is praying at the right zman. Right, so I give can, him, yeah. I give him the parnas that he needs for he that needs day. This, and, no, uh, let it go. I permit it to flow, whatever. Right, like, exactly. He's, he's doing it. Um, okay. So, so, but he himself has six powers. What are these? He, what his own six powers. I don't think it's his. It's his. 
as they are projected within him. Meaning, it's like the sixth day of creation are linked to his... Flow through him? Like, perhaps? flow through him. And because of that, he directs it to appropriately. It's like another generator. Uh, a, a lot of it, you know, when we have, we use those mashal, and it's, you know, the best mashal is light and electricity. And those transfer electricity from one transformer. How does electricity come into your house? It goes from, from the, the water... Uh, uh, how do you call it? Um, the generator. Generator. Uh, the, the big fabric, like uh, those turbines, whatever, that makes electricity. The wind, Just, wind turbines? Wind turbines, right. Or wind, they have the wind also one, but oh. the water ones. And then it's brought into that those big uh, thing where you see like uh, it's fenced because it's have, it stores all that energy from, from the from the place where it comes from the water, whatever, and then it's distributed to small transformers and then finally into your electric poles. And then to go into your house is another generator that makes it lower mm -hmm. so it doesn't blow up everything. So that that's what, um, that's a bit what's happening. I remember, I forgot which book, I thought it was the Ramchab, I forgot. It says you, go, you have the Hashem sent the energy to, uh, I think the first is the Spheros, and then the Spheros to the angels so to to for yeah to the angels and the ten levels of angels and then they it go the angels to the stars and the stars to us like that like that like that like that like that this really electricity style <coughs> elaborates here where he talks about oh. the self of, Met of a metatron personifies zeron pin which is Okay, so this is because God acting as the creator is, is his presence in Ima. This being the reason why the name Elohim is used in the account of the creation of the world. As we know, a stern judgment originates in Ima. The name Elohim is associated with Ima, the mother of the world, i.e. of the sixth spirit of emotion that govern the world. Pina has the power to differentiate between details and implications of concepts in order to accept or reject them as truth. The world is governed by these strict laws of nature. And therefore, the Elohim is used exclu exclusively in the primary account of creation. Okay. Mm. In contrast, the six extremists Zeranpin are the ones who conduct the affairs of the world. Thus, the spirit of Metatron are a lower order than the source of the emotions of the So, right. So the Zeranpin. Is the, the is the the one with action he's like the son so to speak of imam but really his power comes from ima right which is a more intellectual you know decision then is the it goes through the emotions the the ampin and and uh, and and that's the last stage the ampin the last stage before things happen in this world i think that's Unless he's going to bring another stage. This is real. Should I continue? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is why the, mat the matron asked, what does he do? Meaning, I already know there is much to occupy him, such as feeding the world from the horns of the green. But all this is taken care of by the supernal days, as we mentioned. Whereas he himself, the creator, i.e. the supernal parts of Ima, what does he do? Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So, they're saying the higher, okay, the king ordered this, the, all this, these to happen. This, and this the matron is, is, is deep. Right. <laughs> is, this, is this supposed to be a man Jewish too? Like, it's like he knows, like, she knows all the. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. She, she, obviously, it's not, a, it's not a simple uh, lady. It's not simple. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so, so we kind of said this already, but he's, re he's making it clearer now. Right? Yeah, he's in clearing that. that it's she was hinting at Ima, meaning that's why she doesn't ask the other question. Because that's Zara and Pink. She's going deeper. She's she just wants to go. Yeah. Well, like, okay, he created all that. He sustained all that. And, and Zara and Pink. Right. I'm asking exactly. I want to asking you about Ima. On the higher level. What's Zara? I thought Zara and Ima go together. No, Zara and Pink is is oh, the next so stage well. after Ima. Oh. It, it receives from Ima. Mm -hmm. okay. And Zara and Pink is a. The, the parts of that the six. governs yeah that's six extremities so right. like within him has the oh, it, it, it feeds the world from the horns of the rain 
So what is there? So I know what Zeranfin is doing, but I don't know what Ima's doing. That's what she exactly, means? exactly. What right. does she do? He means meaning. So so meaning Ima being the thing, the place where that is on the high level responsible for the for the stuff. It's like oh Ima, she she made the babies. Okay, what she did now? She gave uh, she gave the baby. A, m a mother gives birth to a baby, and it has all information, right? So, so the baby grows or whatever, and then he's born. But what should she do during that time? She, the, she, the baby continues to grow on its own. What is the mother doing after she gave birth to the baby? She's right. So that's but that right. Except right. In, in our case, I don't know why, but I'm saying in our case, Eva doesn't didn't give birth. No, she gave birth to Zeran Pin. Meaning she oh, she passed down. She gives Aaron she, she gives Aaron its own independence. But her real role is not is, is above Aaron Right, because it exists beyond that. It has it has it's uh, she's not dependent just on Aaron and she has to Aaron uh, grows so to speak. She feeds him. Okay, now she he goes to get he's a man. He goes to get a job. But what does he do now? Uh, what does she do now that the husband the child is uh, independent? Right, but my problems with that is that it's not it's not stages like. In that metaphor, she gave birth in that stage one. That right. stage two, she 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 becomes a librarian, whatever. But no, no. But, so so but, in, in the part Sufi, in the thing, there's a whole concept of maturity, growing, and being developed, meant and a mochin, meaning stages of growth. There is that same concept. The reason there is such a concept of uh, growing, being, coming independent in the mind and adulthood, child to adult. So, why do you have that whole process? Because there is such a thing in the spiritual world, the way it's structured. That's why, because whatever has happening here in the physical world, part of what's happening in the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're not speaking about. It, it, it's hard to understand because it, it, you think it's instant in the, in the, with the spiritual, but there's still stages that exist it's as if you say whatever you see happening here in the physical world is, ha is because it's happening like that in the spiritual world and you see in the Arizona many times he speaks about giving birth and then the, the growth of the spheros and the growing or the part sufim the growing the maturity of the part sufim and and then or the mochin of the the the, the, the brains the, in, the awareness and that it grows with with time which is like this needs to be a maturity or growth in the spiritual world. But, yeah. <laughs> Not that I understand it, but I understand that there is that process, that concept of growth still in the spiritual world. Okay, but by the spirit, by the part Sufin, it, it wasn't a growth. I, Ima was... Ima didn't start as something and then she grew up into Ima. She is... It's the next stage of... It's a stage of... If, no, but Ima is the stage of giving birth to ener energy that is now in the, can become independent, so to speak. But before uh, Ima, there is Abba, and before Abba, there is um, come on, meaning it's not the last stage, but on the level of Ima, it's like, what is Hashem doing on the level of bif Ima? Okay. Hashem creating a world and now acting as, as an Ima. Then, then the things can be independent. What does he do now, like Ima? It doesn't have, because uh, he could say Abba. Well, what is Abba doing? Abba gave the seed. Now he's doing nothing. But it's asking about that stage, that level, which I, I don't understand. Okay, so what, what, what does he do? Okay. So Rabbi Yosef ben Chalata therefore brought her proof from the verse in six days, for she did not ask him about the creation week, in which case it would have been appropriate for him to answer her by quoting verses from the account of creation. Rather, she questioned him about the whole world for how many days, i.e. millennia, will the supernal days conduct its affairs, for it will exist only that for that many days. He replied, for six days, meaning um, um, in order for the world to endure for six days. Um, except he answered from Kishishis Yamim, Wait, what did he say? He said, Vishamo. Um, right. He said, Yemasa, Shemasa, 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 No, he didn't quote that. No, that's the one he quoted, no? no that is the one he quoted. Yeah, yeah, that's the one he quoted. Because and the question was, why didn't he just quote Bereshit from right, the beginning? Right, from the beginning. 
Why so, is he quoting Shabbos instead of the six days? Right. Uh, apparently, the answer is uh, is just to tell you, because she was not about the days of creation per se, was with his story. Right. So to make, and 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 by it's, it's about history. What's all the purpose? Right. The bigger picture. Yeah. Okay. She asked, "What is the reason for the answer six months?" Okay. That is why um, uh, he told her that the Holy One, blessed be he, sits. He did not mean to imply that God literally sits, God forbid, for God is not corporeal. And the concepts of standing and sitting do not apply to him. Rather, the intention was to answer a statement by saying that God sits, i.e. is idle, free from running all the details of life, these being handled by Metatron, as we said. This is the meaning of a statement that the Holy One, blessed be he, he himself sits, occupies himself solely with making matches. So whereas the day-to-day -day running of the world is handled by God's underlying, underlying Metatron, who serves as an organizing principle to funnel divine beneficence downward, the task of orchestrating the events of life with divine providence in order to match up couples is handled by Ema. Oh, I missed that. Uh, is it made a similar... You said seats are created actually with making matches. Ah. Okay, the reason... Organizing principles from the man. The two day of the words the line of who says I don't know. The test of orchestration. Okay, so that's interesting because here is saying an, uh, maybe a new, a new concept of Yoshev. Why do you have to sit when you say Shema? I mean, the why do you have to sit uh, according to the Arizal? When you say Baruch Hashem you're supposed to sit. You're not supposed to say the first Kedusha and also the, the Kedusha after Shmon Esrei, the, not after Shmon Esrei, the, after Ashrei, after Shmon Esrei. The, those aren't supposed to be said sitting, not standing. So maybe the reason the Shema, the, those Uvalis, I mean the Kedusha and the Shema are supposed to be said sitting it's because it's dealing with, it's saying that we we are solely occupying ourselves with that. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I mean I'm just <laughs> bringing a hint of how, how it could be relevant. No. You're, you're sitting on it, it's like, you are standing, you're like, involved with the thing. I'm sitting now, I'm focused on you. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, so maybe in the Shema, it's telling you, you, Bishvili Nivraulam. Israel, you have to do it as if every, the whole world depends on you. Which Chazal said actually in the Gemara that you have to imagine the world is in the, in the perfect balance and you go to the right one little thing and it, it's the scales tip. It makes sense percent because so in the davening you have Bezog the Zimra is, is um, met, the world of, of Metatron then technically. Then when you go into the Shema, you're sitting because it's now you're in the world of it's Ima. Ima. It's Ima. Bria. It's Bria. And Zerampin is standing, is the, the angels. Exactly. Right. And then and then on Shilut is Amida. So, so, so right. the sitting aspect, we're in Ima, we're in Bria, it's Bria. Which is exactly right. the, why you sit for Shema, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. Right. And uh, according to some, I try, I'm um, noisy, but anyway, some say you should stand for a Psukhidi Zimra. Well, because oh, because it's the world of Yitzhak and the world of angels. The angels stand. That's why we stand with Amida because we're standing like the ark and the highest angel. But so the the idea of standing when you step to Zimra is because you're you're being like an angel singing to Hashem. So, mm. Anyway, okay. The reason he has to do this is because matches are arranged in accordance with divine justice, in according in, in accordance with the party's merits, as we will explain. This being the case, no one can do this but him, since he alone is the one judge and alone can assure that they will be accomplished fairly relative to the conditions of the hour. Okay. So, so why, that's why it's an Emelokim, because you need to judge. Uh, the Gemara says it's based on, the, on its merit. So based on what level you are, he has to make that match with that person. Right. That's what's an Emelokim. And that's a judge thing. Judgment. Thing. Right. You can't, can't sub it out. You can't sub it out, right. Judgment. You can't sub so it's it out. no Rachamim there. Because what? There's no Rachamim there, apparently. No Rachamim. Oh, but For that specific process. But why? And if there was Rachamim, then you could hire someone else? 
Meaning you could get married with the one. If, no, you, no, you can uh, hire Hashem. Can hire someone else. You can sub it out. Listen. No, no, I'm not. I'm saying about in terms of of who you marry. Oh, okay. he, they're gonna. He's gonna get into it right now. Okay, okay, okay. okay actually, I think. True, when the embryo is formed, the soul issues from its source split into male and female, and therefore the match is intrinsic, and no further evaluation of who suits whom should be necessary. But this applies only to a person's first marriage. Certainly for such matches, no divine effort need be expended. Mm. And such matches are not made against the party's wishes, but rather with their full goodwill. Yeah, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah, but here in the case... So meaning your, your true soulmate. Your true soulmate is the first mate is the one you choose the first time. Um, your first marriage yeah, is to your... No, you mean the, if it's a first marriage, then this can be... The, this in in the first marriage you you won't be forced uh, into into anything. It's it, you'll be free to choose based on your merit and based on based on who you want to marry. It, 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 you, it won't be the Shem Elokim. It'll be it'll be uh, natural. <laughs> there there won't there won't be an a, extra control from Hashem. But here, in the case that the matron was asking about, we are talking about the second marriages, where a person is given a spouse commensurate with what he has earned by his deeds. Thus, since a person has free choice to sin against his God, God has to scheme all kinds of schemes, so that no one pushed away, re pushed away, remain, remain pushed away forever. Thus, the first of the discussions for second marriages, and more remarkably, God, Iima, has occupied himself since creation with arranging second marriages, but the definition of a second marriage is broader than simply the second marriage in his lifetime, as we will now see. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so he's saying the second marriage is based on your good deeds, on your... On, on, your, uh, on, your, on, on your, your merits. Deeds, on your merits. The yeah. first marriage is not marriage, it's based on... Um, the fact that it's your soulmate, basically, you know? Um... It's, it's not, um, it doesn't need God's help as much or divine effort. It's, you're right. It's a more. It's more natural. It's it has nothing to do with merit. It, that's it's it's above merit at that point because it's just it's your soulmate. It's kind of like 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 two Meritless. two young kid people you know guy and girl fall in love. Right. It's like easy. Right. Right. Okay. But the second match is complicated. But, but what he's saying here, though, let's say in this lifetime, our first marriage could, when we married, let's say we, we, we married, stay married, let's say we just one person, that, that could technically be your second marriage in right. your lifetime of, right. so to yes. speak. That the person you marry right. could be based on your merit, not necessarily that it's your perfect soulmate that, that would have be, would be easy in terms yeah, of... Yeah, otherwise we'll all like, get divorced and married again. <laughs> We'll, Make we'll sure never, right. Oh, we'll never, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. So, <clears throat> such people become reincarnated, but they do not reincarnate as a couple, for sometimes he is reincarnated in one generation and she in another, such that the reincarnated man needs to be matched up with a different reincarnated woman, who also lacks her original mate in this incarnation, who is similar to him in merits. Matching of such a couple is indeed a very difficult thing, in as much as they are different in nature and not originated from the same soul root, it is therefore difficult to bring them together. So you're saying a, a second marriage so, can be can be that type of marriage, where where you the reason it's hard is because you you not you can't find your actual soulmate f original. You but you span generations. Right. And so God has to like mix and match, like, it used to be like Sayo at Sinai for like 5,000 years. Uh, five, five, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like each soul like can go with a billion the possibilities. possibilities. And based on your deeds, you're going to get the best type of soulmate for that, for that uh, lifetime until you eventually reunite with your original soulmate. Oh, that's the plan? Yeah. 
if it's if the case. If some olam, you go back to your ziva brisha? Uh, eventually, yeah. Hmm. Eventually. So that, that's, that, that's the part that is difficult. Because since it's not the original soulmate, it has to be someone that mm-hmm. fits. These yeah. reincarnates are called individuals, literally singles. So they're married, but they're still single, technically, if it's not their right. Soul, right. soulmate. Exactly. That's Moshe Vichid in Bezra. Because each one is by itself separated from its real soulmate. Such exactly. marriages are referred to as being done against the party's will. This, apply, this does not apply to the wedding, for then, for, for then everyone is happy on, on the day of their wedding, on the day of their hearts rejoicing. The difficulty lies only in sustaining the marriage. As to the matches, the matron made between the manservants and maidservants, we may assume they first said something positive, but afterwards they fell into arguments, and she could not keep these marriages going. That's why they had the whole story. But it was Ziva Grishon by then. Um, no, if it was Ziva Grishon, it would have Amazing. worked. It yeah, would have, it would work. Everything would have flowed by them to itself. Oh, I mean, they, they all... That's and they're and, all whatever. They yeah, because she's the one who forced the marriage. Say, you go with this, and you go with this, you go with this. So maybe they're all single. Yeah, they weren't really soulmates. Well, yeah, they were technically singles, but the, so that's why God had to do it because that type of singles couldn't match with each other. It was too no, hard. But, but how do you know the maid servants and the man servants was was not were Ziva Rishon or Shani? Maybe because all because ten they, years old and, and there's because Zivu it Rishon. all failed. Okay, so and I, I, th- I, 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 th- I mean, again, yeah, it's the mushroom, so I, I assume that's the, to get the lesson done, I guess. The idea of the thing is, if you're really with your soulmate, you're not going to, to sustain the marriage will be easy, was the idea, I think. But if you're not, to sustain it will be difficult. Mm-hmm. Is that the idea? I don't know if that's... I know. Uh, well, there's probably the idea where initially the person you're married to is could be like a second marriage, but then you work into yourself so much that you can draw down your original soul root, your soul root into her, and then it's actually she becomes your initial right. first marriage. Yes, so to speak. I mean I've I've heard that from Roy Weinberg. Oh wow! That for, it it can refer to the same woman, the first and second marriage. That she's first like a second marriage where she's like not your soulmate, but then she can become it. Right. And she can then draw down, or you can draw down a soul into her. And yeah. she become, can become, yes. if you... I've seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> 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 what? Meaning, meaning that, that you marry someone and, and there's a lot of difficulties and it's really, it's really hard. And then it becomes and, and, better? And then there's a shift. There's a shift in the personality or in the way the marriage works and things become... That would be you, uh, I've I've seen it in, uh, because again that's what I do with couples a lot but I've seen shifts that was like wow you know yeah, you don't you don't expect such a shift yeah it, I need that <laughs> <laughs> a lot most people need that yeah. I needed it too and you know even though you know my my wife is great but it's, well, it's so different and I I saw a change that I didn't think would could be so good of a change so do you think then that you probably had a second marriage so to speak. Right. So you want reverse. I do, it doesn't make any sense that I would be with her. Everything is just the opposite. Like, I, she's everything that was not on my list. <laughs> I wanted someone who is into sport, into, you know, spirituality, into traveling, into people. Everything the opposite. Like, come on. And, and, and I don't even know why, you know, it just happened. <laughs> I mean, it was, it's, it's weird. That's what, that's why I feel like it went easy, like first marriage. Oh, easy, yeah, easy to run one, and then or something like that. But this, in this case, is reverse. But it's, it's, hard, reverse it's, it's hard, and then it's then becomes it's hard. Easy. Everything, but the, the, but the getting is, married was easy. Well, he's saying that's what he's saying. He's, he, 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 he's saying he's excluding the actual marriage day, so that's separate. right, right. That's why he's yeah, actually yeah. sustaining it. That means uh, yeah. it's a second, it, it's yeah, it's um, you want the opposite, yeah. first, but you want the, the reverse. You didn't start with your. So yeah, original. Ended with your, your soulmate, so to speak. But how is it possible that the two, it's one neshama? It goes by the neshama, right? The yeah, but the neshama can be downloaded. You can marry it. Uh, it's so an ibo nish, like an ibo neshama. Yeah, you can have up to three neshamas in the same body. Mm-hmm. That's how, what happens with a ger. A ger, it's not his neshama. The neshama, but suddenly, that goes into his body. 
worldwide, yeah. <laughs> You, be, you, you become attached to Moshe Rabbeinu or to Avram or to, to Baruch Shem or something. It's, the, uh, it's a fascinating concept. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a special... That's crazy. Something more holier in that sense. Yeah, if they get that's what I say. Hashem kids. loves the guy more than the, the, the you regular sure? Jew. You sure it has to be a, ta- a tzaddik though? Yeah. yeah. Why? Why can't it be a... Steve. Because Steve Goldberg, you're not gonna be using a regular, yeah, regular Jewish soul. No, uh, or maybe, could be, uh, or maybe if they fall, if they fall back, no, no, the, they fall. It's it's as if mm, I don't know how to explain, but I mean that's the Arizo uh, says it like that in a few places. That that's it's 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 as if. Those the Gerim were made specifically for tzaddikim, right. <laughs> for sort of wow. tzaddikim. Well, uh, made for tzaddikim or tzaddikim were made for Gerim? No, Gerim. the Gerim. It's it's because a Gerim really is someone who is technically already Jewish, but he's returning. It's just that it it's like the spark that had been lost, like the broken first luchos. What's greater, the piece small broken pieces of the first luchos or the second new luchos that is brand new, you know, from. Apple, whatever. No, tablets, Apple tablets. No. Uh, the, it's the broken luchos that are the first one that are the broken pieces. Those are the gerim, so to speak. And to bring, allow that energy from that were in the letters, rather the broken, it needs to find that piece back to go back together. It's like bring back the first luchos. The, the, the tzaddikim who were hidden to help the world from the beginning of creation, the, like the light or or ganus. I'm combining a lot of things so together. So three. Is, <laughs> so what are the three? If one's the, the tzaddik, then the, the the second one is the actual the Jewish soul that was was hidden, and then they have another. So you said there was three. No, no. I say up to three. You oh, can have to three. up to three uh, souls in the same body. What did you mean, hidden tzaddik? I mean, I mean, because busy, hidden in the sense that, um, be, because that's how Hashem makes the world works in terms of uh, great nishamos. He has to hide them so that they will not be attacked by the forces of darkness. The the the, the this world. That's why the whole concept of Moshiach is it comes from the worst place, is. Uh, to, uh, Yehuda sleeping with what he thought was a prostitute, right? Um, well, that's not that was not that bad because technically it was legal, but it happened like as if he slept with a prostitute, and then uh, Lot with his daughter Moab. So from incest, there's going to come Ruth, who is the mother of David Amelech, meaning the ancestry and like why they had to come like that it couldn't come like from you know mm. two holy people sleeping together like normally no it had to come like in a twisted way so so the the, the, the Arisal explains the reason it happens like that is because those holy souls root have to be hiding in what looks completely un, unholy so that the force of evil don't have a grasp to it because they want to destroy. You have to understand that Moshiach is going to be the most wanted man on earth. Every force of darkness is going to try to destroy him and kill him. And they say the same thing of Moshiach ben Yosef that is trying to kill him and we have to doubt him that he shouldn't die. For the he will die. Right. It's, it's machlokes, but some say he will die, some say he won't die. We don't. It depends on our merits. In uh, what way will he die? From what? I heard that the Gros said that the, that, that the Moshiach ben then you're safe to be a generation. Right. A, a you can, you can, a group of people. Yeah, yeah it's called a tour. He, 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 he said it can be a few individuals or it can be a group of people. Anybody, he basically said anybody who participates Esther, actively. Even a female. Esther was a... a oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, anybody yeah. Anybody who participated actively no, in ben the ben process of redemption. Oh. No, wait. she acted in like the... I think I read it in that too. Uh, she acted in the spirit of Meshach Ben Yosef. She was like the Meshach Ben oh. Yosef. Between her and the Mordechai, maybe there's a, con- a connection. Com- you know, com- if you combine them both, they're really machine. It's all yeah, it's like, a combination. It, it could all be like 
There's yeah, different yeah. levels to this. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. I think Rav Cook said that the, that the early Zionists were Mashiach. Then you say? Possibly Mashiach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. say if that was the cultured one. You know. Right, right. The more into, into the, the world, like, preparing. Um, okay, so... Okay, so... They were first literally singles visited and observed against the person. Mm-hmm. Okay, therefore, therefore, we have quoted the verse we have quoted refers to God as Elohim, for he judges these reincarnates according to his attribute of strict justice in accordance with their deeds, and thereby makes these marriages endure. This is why the verse uses the idiom of making them sit, for sitting implies remaining. Um, as in the verse, and you dwelt, literally sat in Kaddish, which means that they stayed there. For God makes these people, who as we said are individuals, stay in one house, even against their natures. That's why you had to use the word. Moshe Yechid in Besa, that's what this is. Mm. So he takes these singles, and they make them who are like, really... Like, sit. Mismatched. <laughs> right, he makes them stay. Sit. Sit. Good dog. I mean, because otherwise, it, it's saying like he's forcing them because otherwise they wouldn't stay because they're so unhappy. Or right. Or? It's not their nature. Then naturally. But in reality, though, but but there is there is a concept of divorce, though, you know. Right. This is just to say as if because like, of divorce, it's 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 a mitzvah to get divorced. If if if, but it's the reason why you don't want to get divorced. If you, most people get divorced because. They don't want to do the work, it's too hard, I'm just switch. If it's abuse or things like that, that's different. But, again, majority of divorce nowadays because the work is not done and it's, they find it too hard. And it is very hard. But, again, if it's perfect to that, it's, if, because if it's second marriage, if, no, if it's not the second marriage, it's a different thing. So, yeah, well, they're, they're like, exceptions. That's like says, Kala Magarish, Ziva Rishona, very last page in Gittin, right? Kala mm-hmm. Some whoever divorces his first Zivog wife, the Mizbeach cries. It's something like, like it shouldn't have happened. Or like, so, so, there's a serious malfunction here. It's, it's a glitch in the matrix. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. It shouldn't be like that. Like that would, you would you would imagine that to divorce your your Risha would be going against your nature. If your nature is to come yeah. together, then right? Like, something like that. Like the the, the Mizbeach itself cries. Or something. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you understand? It's it's one of it's one of the challenge of the generation. It's it's because uh, it's, again, this they would never as many divorced in the Jewish people as today. It's it's insane what's happening. Everybody is getting divorced, and it's like it's worldwide too. You know, it's worldwide too. Yeah, um, yeah, because everything that happens within the Jewish people is gonna happen there, out there. Mm-hmm. So like, it's a, it's an image. Of, it's where the micro level. Mm-hmm. You see, you it's like you have the bubble. You see what's happening. The bubble is gonna happen everywhere. Mm-hmm. So we are the micro, and, and th- th- that's why we're so, we're so everyone. The greatest German is a Jew. The greatest American is a Jew. <laughs> the, mm. the greatest, you know, it's always because we reflect each one of those things to the perfection, to, to, to the ultimate. And, and, we, and we bring it inside our own Jewish people. Uh, so you want to know what the problem in the world? Look at the Jewish people. Or you want to know what, what, what the, pro- the point of the world is? is it? You want to see what the problems of the world are. Look at the Jewish people. Or backward, you can see. You want to look at what's the problem in the Jewish people. Look at the world. Mm. You'll see. If, the, if there's immorality, there's immorality in there. If there's, you know, a theft, so look at the Jewish. It's, it's, it's the same. It's, uh, so he is right. <laughs> what? <laughs> you are, he, he is right. But what's his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. yeah. Well, Who's yeah? Uh, Kanye, West. Kanye West. Oh, Kanye West. Kanye West. Kanye West. Sorry, yeah. Kanye oh, West. that's how they call it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some, He's right about that's all our fault. No, because uh, didn't he say something about like the the, the Jewish that control the media, or whatever? Oh, in some well, in and some like, way, yes, but it's fake Jews that control the media. <laughs> fake Jews? You mean not really? What do you mean fake? Meaning people who might think they're Jewish, like like. Uh, they're not really uh, they're uh, technically Jewish. Halakhically... Right, yeah, they're not Jewish. They, 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 you might think well, they're Jewish, but Jewish, they're not Jewish, or maybe they are halakhically Jewish, but really their soul is not the Jewish soul. It's an error of Rav's soul. Um, That's a whole other thing. That, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a whole other topic. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that, but they're Jewish. 
Yeah. Most the, yeah. Are, I, I think most of them are Jewish, I would guess. Yeah, mo most, you'll be surprised how many are not Jewish. Really? It's gonna be, yeah. Because their father, Even some their with, not Jewish. No, 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 because their soul. You mean like in a Kabbalistic sense? Yeah, in Kabbalistic, yeah. <laughs> yeah in Kabbalistic sense. Because how the Arab it? rab is Jewish. R right? Yeah, yeah. Jewish. The, 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 the Baal Shem Tov says one of the third and worst exile is the you, uh, Shedim Yehudaim. Meaning that they are Jewish Shedim. And he says they look like rabbis, uh, leaders. They look holy. Wow. And those are the Erev uh, Rav and they, and yeah. they are really the Jewish Shedim. demons. Yeah, Shedim, Shedim Yehudaim. Shedim Yehudaim. That's in, in Jewish demons. Yeah. 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 I, when I saw it the first time, I said, no way. Who says that? The, the Baal Shem Tov. Baal Shem Tov and uh, I, if you, uh, I just came across the cool Rambam and he says the, the you know the, the, there's tens ten tens, levels so, um, so of Mishnah of uh, what level of angels uh, no. <laughs> Pro procreative uh, oh sorry <laughs> acts that are produce bad offspring like if if, if she if, if, if rape um, drunk when you're drunk mm -hmm. like a bunch of stuff like that so that, produ oh, that draw, type of the draw produce down, drug drug what is it draw, draw down What's draw down no like a download yeah the soul like the soul the type oh. of soul that you bring down depends on right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. those are ten yeah. different types of souls yeah, like the bring. kavana during tashmish and all right, right. anyway so the gemara says there's ten uh ten kids that come from certain and list them and this guy is oh. blind and that kid oh name right 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 so much, i can show you the yeah yeah, yeah. I've, I've, anyway so I've, the ramam says these like the kids that came from these kinds of unions are the the, like the heavy contributors to the to the era of and cause all the problems for Jews, something like that. Yeah, it's the same thing. So yeah. Was, maybe, that ties into. Right, right, ties into that. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So this explains. Um, I didn't read that little sentence. For their inner nature is to bond their original soulmates. Wow. Okay. This explains that there can be a warning and punishment for fulfilling, or for fulfilling or neglecting the commandment to marry and procreate. For in a second marriage, the person first couples with his spouse of his own goodwill and volition, and he thereby acquires merit for fulfilling the commandment. Mm. Uh, Meaning it doesn't mean it's easy. He means that he's his choice. He, so mm -hmm. he get a chance to choose. He, he's not forced. You get a chance to do your... To, 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 to fulfill the mitzvah of so that's why there's a reward I mean, that's why there's a reward because yeah. if Hashem had forced you you won't have a reward for it and if he does not want to marry he incurs punishment it's only after the marriage that God forces the couple to remain together in one house this is the meaning of the verse he causes them to dwell in the house as we said but so meaning if if it's, if you choose on your own, then it's great. You get the the reward for for getting married. It doesn't mean it's gonna be an easy marriage, but it means it's gonna e you you make the choice, and therefore you get the reward for making the choice. Um, but if you refuse to do that, then you get punished and you're forced. It is after the marriage that God forces the couple to remain together in one house. So meaning, once you have made the choice. Even if it's your first zivug, once you make the choice, Hashem is going to force you to stay together instead of getting away from each other. Yeah, Moshe, Moshe vichidim beisa. That's always on there. But but what? But what? Why do you get punishment if you don't? Be, no, be, be, because you're refusing to to using that opportunity of your own free choice. Meaning you're. Why does it mention the question? Oh, oh, no, sorry, no, sorry. I said it a bit different. In the second marriage, the person first couples with his spouse of his own goal. And they buy. And if he does not want to marry Nikki's punishment, it's only after the marriage that God forces the couple to rent to get in his house. I was speaking about the second marriage, where. He has to force them to stay together, even though he doesn't want to get married. So the forcing is just to remain together, not the actual... Oh, yeah, no, no. 
yeah, but the point is, his question was, if it's against your will, <clears throat> so then why do you get reward or punishment? Why right. do you get reward if it's against your will? And if you don't do it, you weren't forced, so why should you get punished? All right. No one forced me to do it. Why should you? Anyway, so, so, but, so, but if it's going in the Zivuk Shani, so... So you get... It's, it's, it's free will, so you do get far. And if you don't do it, you also get punished, because you... It's something that's not dependent on being forced. You have to do it, and if you don't do it, you're... Get a demerit. So the forcing, we're saying, is only after the... Uh, it's only for a Zivuk Shani. And it's after the marriage itself. Mm -hmm. It's just, the forcing is to stay together. Hashem like forces you to stay together, like right. He forces singles. Moshe Yechidim. Yes. Beta. He forces singles. No, and, and, and yeah, because sometimes you there's two different things. There's this, or sometimes you're forced. Like the parents made the match. You're forced into it. You have absolutely no choice for it. Like by Hasidim, mm -hmm. they're all forced marriage. Most, most. I mean, today less yeah. and less, but. Hasid is mostly forced marriage. You meet one time, you have the whole pressure of family. No, no, she's a good girl. No, 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 no. Wow. Wow. Um, but by very, very, very yeshivish, also sometimes. Uh, wow. you know, what, what, what are you waiting for? What, what's the problem with her? Please, you don't say wow. anything wrong with her. That's. I mean, yeah. I felt it was just that one. I think I told that one phone call from Rabbi Sutton. I'm like, wow, wow. Right. Imagine that with like right, right. families and like. Yeah. No, There's right. no free will at that point. And, and by, by Sfardim, by Sfardim, the children never throw throw. It's recent that the, the kids, they even by you do Buchayim's in uh, Queens, if the parents are not, they don't like the guy or the girl, they, I mean, they think, break the marriage. Even I mean, they like the guy. You think about it too. In America, there's more the options, so to speak. You know, because. It's, like imagine with 300 years ago, you're from a small town, like who else are you going to marry? You right. Know? <laughs> no, so but that, but that's why you worked much better in the past, in right, the right. sense that everyone knew each other. It was, you know, we, we knew the families, good good friends or whatever. So, or, you know, you did also for sustain this money. They have money. She has money. So they, they, they can survive. It's always arranged marriage. Mm. Today, it's almost hard, <laughs> harder because... Oh, I ch I made the choice, and now I have a problem. Before it's like it's easy to say, "Oh, okay, it's stuck. It's, it's my parents' fault." At least you don't feel guilty. Here, it's you made you ask for her, or you know you 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 proposed. So it's it's <laughs> it's interesting that that whole system um, of soulmates. I mean, the, the million dollar question is how much do you choose? No? Right. I mean, if if I, how much we should you have? Uh, you know, a thousand years ago or two thousand years ago, if you're what, thirteen, <laughs> and you get set up with the with the girl there's or no yeah, way, yeah, there's no choice. To it. Yeah, but it's not even like it, it, like, no, it doesn't require a choice. It's right. Of course, I'll marry. Yeah, it's, it's like cute. it's like I'm thirteen. It's, you know, everything's great. But plus, you have to even take nowadays, into, if you're eighteen or twenty. Right, and you yeah, never meet, you. and you never meet the opposite sex. You know, it's pretty exciting. I get it. By, that, that, that's why by Hasidim and it's very shivish. She works. They never touch or spoke to a girl. You know, it's just like they they'll be excited with any girl. So it's not. That's why it's you know they got married. Itzhak did Itzhak know Rivka. He didn't even chose. Avram chose for him. Mm. And and say oh and he married Mirika and he loved her well yeah you cannot love her before you just saw her for the third time she's fourteen years old or third or three I mean, you see really the parents were in charge of the, the, the right. historically so yeah so then so then fast forward to nowadays <laughs> it's a big mess it, it, it's a big, it's you big should mess. give it back to the parents to do it it'll be more simple in many ways. So complex personalities, it's very hard for people to get along nowadays. So, so if we're saying that it's in, yeah. it's the power of ima, then that sustains these matches. Then, right? See, we're saying any matches. Yes. Right, and so therefore, so yeah, you your kavana speak to should, ima. <laughs> your kavana in shema somehow right. should give you the koach to. Uh, to, to maintain to make, your marriage, right, right, yes. If you yeah. if you're in the marriage of Sheni, Hashem Echad, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. That's what it is. Right, right. That, and the after is Hashem Elokeinu. All through with Ahava and 
Uh, maybe that's what it is. That Hashem helped me in my to stay married. <laughs> when you say the Shema, that could be another yeah. whole thing. But that's where it, it's founded. Yeah, it's, that's it's where it's rooted. I, uh, on another note, probably. Yeah, yeah. I just came across an interesting uh, Hirsch again. Oh yeah. It says there's no there's no word in Hebrew for bride and groom. Ah, uh, you'll say That's daughter-in-law and son-in-law. Technically. It's oh. all related to the parents. Really? Chatan and Kala is... Chatan technically means son in most in the most technical sense. Uh -huh. It's borrowed son to apply to bridegroom. Oh. Because you have the Chatanto... Chatanto and... Chotenet and... And then Chamiha and Chama is her, her father-in-law and mother-in-law. But she is the, like the adornment. That's so cool. Anyways, so the point is that it's it's all very... It's parents-based. Because... Uh. He says Chatan is from connect word of some sort of like um, fancy connection, like a, whatever, a beautiful connection. Eten makes a connection. So, yeah. So, yeah, which so is, his mm -hmm. his name and establishment, his um, designation is like he's connecting into the to new family, the family parents, bringing like a new branch, so to say, and she's sort of like the adornment of the family, the, yeah. the parents. And then to each other, it's just incidental that they're Chatan Vakala. And then Ishvi Isha is at any time. It's not. Right. Um, it's, it's not even. So interesting. Ishvi Isha is more like. Whatever. It means really means man and woman. It doesn't even mean man and wife. Yeah. Yeah, so. My parents based. Very good. Well, Fine. that was a good, uh, good learning. 100%. Thank good you so much. Thank you. To Think about all this and how it relates to the sitter, no? <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. How connected to the sitter now? Right, I'm yeah. The ima is to sustain. Do you have a sitter that, uh, that says that stuff? I mean, I know that that's known, but do you have a specific sitter that you use? Oh, that I use? Yeah. That says what stuff? Like, which part of the field corresponds to... Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I have all of them, but... <laughs> Um, but the but the but well, I don't have it here. I think it's in, actually in show. But oh, the, the 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 one from the has the English. Right, it, it's very good. It's it's it has it's um it's actually one of the latest printed Sidorim. Um, it meaning it gives the basic simple Kavana, even that it's already. It's called King David's um, the Ro the Rosesa Day edition. Uh, there, it's, there, there's a rabbi, what's his name? Uh, what is that? King David Yeshiva, something like that. Uh, from his yeshiva by the Kotel, the Kabbalistic Yeshiva, and they printed it, and the Roses that they found sponsored it, and they printed You can find it online. Uh, but even what, what's that sort of you have that. Uh, so otherwise, you have those ones, that's the Rashash. So Rashash, that's like. Hmm. You know, this is. You've seen it. You seen it, but this, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. But, it, but where does it say like the category? Right, right. So the, for the, for this, yeah, this one. Ha I mean, you have, but it's so many details that you lose yourself in the categories. You, 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 sh you shouldn't get the, the. There's the one that has uh, this one. You can use this one. A, a lot, a lot of the books have it actually. Um, and right before Shema, I will tell you. Um, this Korea, yeah. Yeah. So let's say, let's go uh, about Shema. Yeah, Rosh Hashanah should say Yitzira. Right, so we said, initially we need to take this one another Yitzira, so we put one Yitzira, we behold it as a preparation, and then, there, and then, here. So Rosh Hashanah, and say, uh, he said, well, I now we're going to turn to the Olam Yitzira, we give a Baruch, 13 Baruch, you know, we give a Baruch, and you give a, that you should be easier. And then it's going to bring you then the, the, the by Shema is going to say. Yeah, so this one is yeah. based on the round house Kavanos. And the, one of the most um, easy to look and, and to see like it's well put is the one, the other one that I... I think oh, this is the one. Wait, oh, wait. Yeah. In fact, that's the one you have. Yeah, this is the one. This one says it up clearly like up here. here. Alright. So you go... This one has its theory, right? Yeah. And it tells you actually the name of Hashem, the iteration of the name of Hashem that is associated with each world too. So, 
stuff here? Right yeah, over here. Yeah. 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 Alright, so the same thing is here, Adria. Yeah. And then, and then, of course, one is here, but it's good. Exactly. I like that one a lot. Yeah, that's silly. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah, okay. so then it's uh, that's uh, Matuk Midrash. Matuk Midrash, right? Okay. So, uh, so this one is the most clear, or the what is that? The uh, edition um, King David. Because that one is English. That one has English. Yes. Uh, Rosetta. What is it? Rosetta. Right, right. Rosetta. This one has simple English sentence, and then it brings those things. Um, I have a strange question for you. You have an old saver. What? I was wondering if I could switch for you an old saver for a new saver. I like the old ones. I don't um, want to do it now. I'm just wondering if I could. It depends with what it is. Ramin or Bachaya. Oh, Ramin Bachaya? Um, I'm trying to um, I think... I have the, you know the cook? I have the cook version. This Let me one. see that thing. Yeah, that's the one I want. Yeah? It's the whole thing in one, though, yeah? Right. Yeah. I don't mind. Okay. I'm gonna see it. Maybe I'll maybe I'll maybe I'll swipe it one day. Sure. I have to bring mine. No problem. Which is this one? I'm wondering which year it is from. I like old. You like it also? I don't like the notes. Oh. Everything has notes. Right, right, yeah. I, I just want the text. The text, right, right. I feel you. Um, no, yeah, this one. Uh, if you have okay. any pressure, no problem. Okay. Fine. Um, good night. Good night. Thank you. Uh, next week. Can I go? Yeah, yeah. Good to Thank <laughs> you.